Welcome to Across the Table, connecting South Dakotans to the hottest topics in food and farming. My name is Melissa Johnson and I'm your host for Across the Table. With the holiday season fast approaching, thoughts are turning to the traditional family gathering. In this episode of Across the Table, we're sharing a new recipe for holiday ham. We'll introduce you to a South Dakota hog and crop farmer who will answer your questions on hot topic food and farming issues and tell you how that holiday ham goes from his farm to your holiday table. Well, it's hard to believe that the holidays are here already. And I know if you're like me, you're preparing, decorating the tree, doing some shopping, getting ready for the family to come home, doing a little more shopping. And as you're getting ready for that Christmas dinner, front and center on everyone's holiday table is that Christmas ham. Joining me once again, Chef Scott from hy V. How you doing? Good, it's great to be back. Ah, thanks so much for joining me. Now you've got a holiday ham right here. Tell me what we're gonna do with this today. Well, we're gonna do a little bit of a twist on the traditional ham with a sweet apple and cinnamon glaze. It sounds delightful. I'm excited about it. Let's get to it. Okay, well, it's really simple. We're gonna start with a quarter cup of apple jelly. Okay. And to that, we're going to add three humble ingredients, but together it makes a sweet and super well-balanced glaze. Awesome. So we're gonna start with a little bit of nutmeg. Okay. And then we're gonna add some cinnamon. And to that, we're going to add some lemon juice. And at this point, all you're going to do is mix it up until it's all mixed together well. You can see it's really simple. Absolutely. At this it point, amazing. we'll set it aside. And to add just a little more flavor profile to our ham, we're gonna add, and as you can see, I've got some clove, whole clove, very good. Whole Thank you. clove in it. It's pretty straightforward. We're gonna glaze it like any glazed ham. Okay. And uh, set that there. And you can see with a brush. Oh, it looks delightful. So we've got our oven preheated to 300 degrees. That glaze smells amazing. Now, the lemon juice, what does that do for, what does that do as an ingredient? Well, really what it does is it adds just a little bit of acid to the flavor of it. It helps break down uh, some of the fibers in the meat. It's gonna make the ham just pop a little bit and deliciousness first and foremost. So at this particular point, you can see I've got it glazed pretty well. I'm gonna go ahead and transfer it to a baking pan. Okay. And I've got some foil, shiny side up. We're gonna go ahead and put it in a 300 degree oven for about two hours. And then we'll uncover it and finish it for one hour till it's the 115, 120. Sounds delicious. Well, that ham's been in the oven about three hours. Should we check and see if it's ready? What? It smells amazing. All right, so that's been in there for three hours. You can see I uncovered it for the last hour. There you are. So it's got a nice caramelized texture on the outside, but boy, does it look like it's juicy on the inside. Could I try a piece? I thought you'd ask. Man, it looks fantastic. I'm gonna set it right there for you. Sounds great. I'll just try a little piece here. I'm gonna try a bigger one. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm. It is so juicy. It's sweet, it's savory. It's everything you could want in a holiday ham. Scott, you've outdone yourself. It's fantastic. Great job. Thanks. For this recipe and many others, go to HungryForTruthSD.com. Before that delicious holiday ham makes its way to the cases at High V, and long before it makes it to our dinner table, it starts out on a South Dakota farm, much like that of South Dakota farmer Mark Reiner. As we're sitting around the dinner table, many times our uh, conversation turns to the meal itself and where that ham comes from. Tell us a little bit about your farm. My family and I live near Tripp and we farm there. We're the fifth generation to operate our family's farm. We have a diversified operation where we raise pigs, cattle, and we also raise co crops, corn, soybeans, and wheat. What do you do on your farm to ensure that your hogs stay healthy? Uh, the health of our hogs is really important to us. And there's a couple of things that go into that. One is the housing that they're in. We want to make sure they're comfortable and they're safe. They have plenty of clean water and good food to eat. The next thing that we're concerned about is nutrition. Uh, it's really important that what those animals need, eat is what they need, and that helps them stay healthy. What do pigs eat? Uh, pigs eat uh, a good diet. I think I know what I feed my pigs better than I know what I feed my children. <laughs> but uh, their diet is, consists of corn, soybean meal, uh, some vitamins and some minerals. Uh, we feed them a very balanced diet. And one of the neat things about being from South Dakota is we raise almost everything we feed our pigs. Are farmers pushed into planting GMOs? Can you speak to that a little bit? Farmers always have choices on what to plant. One of the biggest reasons we use GMOs is a lot of times it let, lets us grow a healthier crop. 
a better crop. It reduces our use of pesticides and fungicides because those plants actually have some resistance to those diseases and those insects. How do you think about sustainability and some of the next generations in your operation? It's one of the most important things. It's, it's something we factor in every day. Uh, I want my children and their children to have an opportunity to farm just like I've had to. And so we want to make sure that we take care of the land. We want to make sure that we take care of our livestock because that is, that is our livelihood. This past fall when we were harvesting, we had kind of a neat picture. It was a really, really busy day. Uh, we had a feed truck at our pig barn. We had a combine harvesting in the field. And we had uh, people there hauling some of the manure out of our hog barns. And I thought, what a full circle picture. Uh, we're raising the crop. We're raising the food. We're feeding those animals. Uh, we're seeing that feed being hauled to those animals after it's been processed. And what those animals don't use, what's left is manure, we're incorporating into our fields to fertilize the next year's crop. I just I thought it was a neat picture. Now it's time for our Ask a Farmer feature. For this episode's questions, we visited Hy-Vee at 49th and Louise in Sioux Falls to find out what's on South Dakotans' minds about food and farming. Would I have to worry about antibiotics in the pork that I eat? We try and take very good care of the pigs that we raise on our farm. If, if we see an animal that is sick, we want to make sure we take care of it. We want to make sure we treat it. And there's really two components to that. One, we want to make sure that we get it in a hospital pen or a sick pen where it can recover. And we also want to make sure we treat it with the proper antibiotic. We will use a vet to make sure that we diagnose the disease correctly. And then we will treat that animal with an antibiotic that can help them get better. Uh, we always track the animals that we treat and we make sure that before they go to market uh, they're free of any antibiotic residue and that there's a safe product for consumers to consume. A conversation, a two-way dialogue between South Dakotans and the farmers who grow their food. That's exactly what Hungry for Truth is all about. If you have a question for a South Dakota farmer or simply want to know more about the Hungry for Truth initiative, visit HungryForTruthSD.com. Also, be sure to follow Hungry for Truth on our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Pinterest. There you'll find much more about the Hungry for Truth initiative and food and farming in South Dakota. We hope you've enjoyed this special holiday-themed edition of Across the Table. Enjoy that holiday ham. I'm Melissa Johnson, and we wish you a very Merry Christmas and a joyous New Year. Join us on our next show for some tasty cupcake ideas. And we'll talk with a local dairy producer about what it takes to keep their cows healthy and comfortable on their family farm.